welcome to the board meeting, West Seneca Central School District, Tuesday, March 22nd. Um, so we can begin our meeting with the pledge. Let's see. Melissa, would you like to lead us in the pledge? Of course. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Who am I facilitating that to? Teachers, other principals, um, and I guess I'll ask just a couple more questions about curriculum council, um, or curriculum cabinet, excuse me. So curriculum cabinet, this is a, a group of professionals and administrators that are paid for duties that they do outside of the school day. And if that is the case, I'm wondering why there are minutes that show these meetings happening during the school day in years past. I'm also interested in knowing if during the COVID um, shutdown, if these stipends were at all reduced or modified as were the coaches of sports during that time. I think that's it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else uh, questions or comments on the agenda? Okay. Um, I'm assuming um, we will we will do the other one at the end. We'll move on to number three, superintendent's report. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody, and thanks for uh, waiting for us as we want to do executive for a little while there. So obviously lots going on in the district right now uh, with spring season starting up. So we have great, some, uh, some great athletic programming going on right now. I'd like to thank uh, our athletic director, uh, Marissa Falcaro Doherty and uh, our, her uh, clerk, Mary Kay Biddle for all of their work as well as all of our coaches uh, for getting things ready for the season. Uh, very excited to, to get out there and it's nice just to see the weather starting to turn a little bit. Uh, quite a bit going on around the district too in terms of like the district art show. I don't know, I think we saw the email that come out. So if you get over to the community center, I think it runs through April 19th, but they have all the art on display over there. So that's exciting as well. Spring concert season too. I uh, also wanted to say thanks to Kim Greenway who actually coordinates art for the district and Trevor Jalowski who coordinates music for the district as well. Our spring concert season's coming into full swing. Um, so, and as we are moving toward the final part of the year, believe it or not, it actually we are at this point, we're probably heading toward the fourth marking period faster than some people would like, but uh, we've been working to try to bring some of our educators together to sort of digest some of the things that have been taking place uh, from a curricular standpoint, uh, looking at things like pacing guides, common assessments, are there material, re material needs like resources and things like that. Um, we don't we do not have all the substitutes that we used to have there used to be a day and time when we would just bring people together during the daytime teachers and they would sit and uh, you know talk about different elements of their and aspects of their curriculum so we've kind of moved toward uh, more of a slice group model where you bring a sampling from different grade levels and departments together to have some of these conversations you know we've been doing this this is a normal process that you engage in and at normal times but um, it's obviously a little atypical during COVID, so I think the need for this is extremely important right now. So a lot of our folks, have, we're, we're bringing them together now as the year's kind of, you know, I hate to say winding down, but we really are getting to that point uh, so that we can start doing some much more planning for next year. So I would expect to see some curriculum writing opportunities as well. Uh, you know, maybe over the summer for some of our, our teachers to get into to be able to take a look and say, all right, you know, this is where we, you know, kind of left off or where we're leaving off. You know, what work do we have to do uh, to be able to support our students moving into next year? Um, you know, again, uh, the, the, the biggest, one of the biggest things that we have to talk about, you know, from the standpoint of, you know, what impact the pandemic has had is, um, you know, really trying to have that laser focus on some of the essential learnings that need to take place. So, um, you know, in order to be able to do that effectively, you have to bring people together. So and in some cases, it does mean rewriting little parts, parts of our curriculum. In other cases, it means maybe just moving on to topics a little sooner than you would, but we need to have people having these conversations. So there do need to be some adjustments made. So. Um, our test to stay program that we have, it's probably not even the, the correct terminology to be calling it test to stay anymore, but we still, still do have our testing program right now. Uh, it takes place here at West Elementary. It's, it's still taking place five days a week. We're not getting a ton of use out of it right now. It is a service that we're offering. Uh, we, if you'll recall, we started off having it at all nine buildings. We scaled back to two and now we're down to one. Uh, our expectation is that will run for the next couple of weeks and then after the break we're going to probably scale back to just a couple of days a week if people need it uh, and we're going to continue to reassess from there uh, you know there may not be the the need to continue with this testing program after uh, much longer after the break so but we're just trying to keep it in place should the the need arise i'd hate to have to try to reestablish the relationship that we have with the company so any questions i just threw a whole lot out there any questions on any of that so far can I ask you how many 
many kids you're testing approximately per week? I mean, in some cases, it's like five. It's not a lot of people. Yeah, and it's not. It, it can also be adults as well. So, like a staff member or something as well. But we're just not seeing the numbers that we were seeing at one point. So, okay. that's that's the rationale behind dropping it back again. So. All right, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. On to um, board president's report. Nothing, uh, nothing really to report other than we're starting to get ready for um, obviously the end of the year, but we're also getting ready to start planning for next year for board stuff. Um, so I appreciate everyone as we work towards that. I know it's um, a plan of ours to kind of start getting some more stuff in place before July when we all have to figure stuff out, um, depending on whether there's, you know, same board members, new board members, or however it is, it's hard to throw new board members into that. So I do appreciate all the effort we've been putting into some of these changes to make things go a little smoother. Um, other than that, uh, nothing else to report on. Um, again, the, the weather, the weather's breaking and we're hitting a lot of, uh, a lot of great things in the district as far as the kids doing sports outside. And, um, we just finished the musical. So I'm um, just really enjoying, you know enjoying the time right now as a board member and i appreciate that um we'll move on to and before we move on just real quick too just a little recognition to our buildings and grounds department because right now they're the ones that are working to get all of our fields outside ready to go so this is a they, they as soon as the weather breaks they hit the ground running so just wanted to give a little shout out of thanks and they got us through winter i yep. mean yep. we uh we, i think our buildings and grounds were in great shape all winter yep. so appreciate that yep. um not to mention vacuuming salt is very difficult <laughs> Um, okay, we'll move on to C, Assistant Superintendent's report. Um, who? John. John? Would you like to come up? Sorry, Mr. Savoni. Doctor. Sorry, doctor. Sorry. Thank you, John. Hi, everyone. Nice to see everyone. Uh, lots happening right now. Um, you know, I know I'll be presenting, I think, at our next work session. I think it's a work session. It could be a board meeting. Uh, on just a staffing update, several meetings already taking place. Um, have one, uh, again, on Thursday with our elementary principals doing our best to look and try to predict what our numbers will be like next year. I think overall uh, we're going to have a continued focus on uh, our primary class sizes uh, and the importance of that moving into next year as we continue to... Um, uh, support our students coming out of this pandemic. Uh, we have continued to evaluate a lot of the staffing that we put in last year and over the past couple years with the installation of learning labs. I know you heard a little bit about that in a previous presentation uh, and some of the success there. So overall, um, and we'll, we'll talk more next time, but uh, I think we're in a, in a good place and have an optimistic out, outlook uh, moving into the future. Just looking uh, as far as a report, uh, you know, just a recognition of a variety of classified appointments. It's good to see people coming into our district. A lot of these places, uh, positions were vacant, uh, and it's good that uh, people are uh, have an interest in coming to work with us. Um, some of our efforts with advertising, whether it be social media, uh, and some of our new recruit front that pushes out to an Indeed has been making a difference, so that's exciting. Uh, Saw a bus driver applicant come through today. Uh, those are like gold, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, uh, just a recognition to all those being appointed, those uh, making permanent status, and certainly a thank you uh, to anyone uh, that is resigning or retiring. Uh, this is, tends to be the season, and we, we still may see more retirements coming our way between now and the end of the year. Uh, and that's always bittersweet, exciting uh, for them, but also uh, you know tough to say goodbye. Many have been here several years. so. Uh, if, unless you have any questions for me, that's all I have. And it's nice to see everyone and see you in a couple weeks. Thank okay, you. we're great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. Seco? Just a couple of updates for you this evening. Uh, first, we are coming off of a wonderful professional development day that the district held on Friday. Uh, many thanks to all those that 
were involved, Kim McCartan for organizing the day, Pat Bronscheidel and various building ambassadors that helped lead building wide discussions on culturally responsive and sustaining education. We had um, some part of our day to day that we had to work in there as well. So our directors, I thank them and all of our teacher leaders who helped facilitate the review of that data uh, using the protocol uh, we had uh, implemented in the district. Um, also Scott Ferkins and his IT team for putting together the training on EdLaw2D and being um, more aware of your surroundings on the internet and phishing and all of those kinds of things. Uh, it was really interesting um, information that I, I learned a lot of new things myself in, in regards to malware and spyware and <laughs> all kinds of things that I didn't even know existed prior to that. So just a big thank you to everyone in the district for their involvement. Um, supervisors, managerial people who were involved in helping with the planning and the logistics. So a big thank you for that. I did want to give everyone an update. We have final word today from Buff State that our capstone students will be able to go to Buff State on June 7th to present some of their information and experiences that they've embarked upon over this past year with their capstone projects. Uh, not only our district, but other districts in the area who also have students participating in similar programs. And at that point of the year, we will have identified our new recruits for next year. And so they will also be accompanying our current capstone students on this trip to Buff State to learn all about capstone projects across the region. So we're really excited about that. And I think uh, all the teachers who have been involved in that program, uh, Dave Papke, Stacy Lutman, uh, Carrie uh, Martino, Warren Yoakum, uh, Lydia Roble, we have a variety of people who have really stepped up and really helped to make this program successful. Um, so big thanks to all of them and their building principals as well for making it work within the schedule. So unless there's any questions, that's it for me. Yes, yes, both middle schools, correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Fowler? Good evening. Um, just to kind of piggyback on what Mrs. Persico said about the Professional Development Day, I just wanted to add that we had an opportunity for our teacher aides to be a part of a professional development on Friday as well, where we sent out a survey um, in the past where we asked them what would be some areas that we could provide them some professional development, what would be some topics. Um, and we had a great presentation um, from Dr. Mariah Grandy, who's doing some work in our office as an intern and, and worked with me to provide a professional development in the area of specific learning disabilities as well as students with autism that our aides participated in in the afternoon on Friday. It was well received. Many aides um, were thankful for the opportunity. It included kind of just some descriptions of those disabilities as well as some tips and strategies on how they can be supportive and helpful um, in those areas uh, with their students. They did ask about some other opportunities in the future um, and even some opportunities that things that they could participate in with their teachers, specifically in the area of reading, writing, and, um, and math. So it was very well um, received. I think it was a great opportunity. It was good to get everybody in person. That was the first time we'd really gotten in person in, in quite a while. Um, we were in the West Middle Odd and, and it was great. Um, the other thing I just wanted to share is that we are exploring an opportunity within the Office of Special Education to take a look at um, an analysis of our processes and our structures with a, an outside consulting group uh, in collaboration with us. What this would do would look at efficiencies and really look at effectiveness in a holistic manner, taking a look at our resources, how we utilize those resources, are the resources spent in the quote unquote um, right way, best way, how in which they can be implemented, taking a look at things like administrative structure, do we have the right things in place in order to receive the best benefit and the best um, experiences for our students with disabilities. As you all know, that is an area that continues to increase. Both we want to um, be able to support students in a variety of different ways, but this is really looking at structures and processes and, and procedures. Um, it can include anything from professional development to student identification processes and opportunity for some benchmarking. And this is something that's been happening in some area districts that is kind of brought to my light, um, to light that this 
consulting group has worked across New York State and continues to do that in a, in a variety of different um, districts locally as well as across the region. This is just an exploration. What could they offer? What might this include? How would this help us? And just kind of help us move, moving things along. Um, and just, you know, we're continue to work with the business office, both CARM's office and John's office as well, in terms of where are our programs next year? How are we gonna support our students? What are our students need? Those CSEs in some places are starting to wrap up. It's March already, but we have a few things um, still happening. Just looking at kind of pulling all of those pieces together. We also sent a survey out to our um, self-contained teachers as to what curriculum areas we should focus on moving forward. And again, hearing a lot of um, additional support in the area of reading and writing, specifically post-COVID, as we all know. Kids are coming back and needing a little bit more support, um, especially in our current special education programs and services. So how do we ad adapt? How do we evolve? How can we provide some opportunities? Had a conversation as recently as yesterday with um, CARM and some of our uh, literacy facilitators as to how can we get more teachers involved in PD in the area of reading and if there's more that we can provide in, a, in, a, in a various ways. So continuing to um, address our, our students' needs in a variety of different ways. Thanks. Right. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. So we'll move on to, um, well, we normally move on to our student representative's report. But um, they're so busy doing so many great activities we have. They can't be here tonight. Um, I know the West Seneca Band Boosters meat raffle was last week, and it was amazing. Um, a lot of meat given out. I know the West Seneca West Sports Boosters is this weekend. There's some great concerts, um, great musicals we just had. A couple weeks ago was the Adams Family. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, anyone else, any ideas what else the students have going on? High school Anything? musical at East Middle this weekend. That's uh, the... Um, middle school. Yes, it's called High School it's Musical. It's called High School Musical. Which is what screwed me up because I, okay. Yep. I probably would have driven them to high school. Um, uh, Friday and Saturday. And tickets are available through the portal yep, or just show online. up online? Yep. Great. Um, I know we have an art show going on. Um, in the library. It's in the library, the town library in the um, area. Okay, great. Uh, we think of anything else, we'll make sure it goes out on Facebook or again, it's nice having the students here, but I know they're busy. Yep. So thank you on that. Um, do we, anyone, we have a need for a recess or are we good just to keep, keep going through since we have a short agenda? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, if I can have a motion to move on 5A through 7C, obviously I'll, during speaking, I'll give you guys time to look through it real quick or look through it at all. Um, may I have a motion for that? Peter, may I have a second? I'll second. Molly, I'll give you guys time for discussion. You guys want to look through those real quick. We have some uh, certified unpaid leaves, appointments, some resignations. And my coach is included in this part. Reappointments, um, looks like we're doing well on the coaching front. Community education appointments, excited to see that. Some student assistant appointments. Um, any, uh, any discussion on anything? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Yeah. That moves 6-0. Um, if I can have a motion to move on 7-D. I'll make a motion. Liz, may I have a second, please? I'll second. Mm, Peter. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Uh, opposed. Oh. Motion moves 5-1. Uh, looking at moving, if I can have a motion to move on 7-E through 8-C. Again, once we get to conversation, I'll give you time to look through it. I'll make a motion. Molly, may I have a second, please? I'll second. Jody, okay, I'll let you guys look page through that. We've got some, um, let's see, substitute appointments, curricular cabinet facilitator appointments, activity advisor appointments, some minutes. And uh, I apologize, I said through 8C, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sir. Okay, great. Uh, any conversation, any discussion on that? Okay, okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Moves six zero. 
And um, I'm going to, correct me if I'm wrong, um, we've got new business, so we can move on 9A through 10A. Or would that be 9F? Is 10A required? Got it. Okay, so just do 9A to begin with? A, B, C. On the, which one's the roll call vote on? B? Okay, so uh, can I have a motion to move on 9A, the student calendar? Peter, may I have a second, please? I'll second. Jody, any discussion on the student calendar? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Move 6-0. Mm -hmm. This falls in line with both pretty much. Yeah. yeah, I think we almost always, yeah. We get pretty close. Yeah. Um, it, we are doing weekend classes, though. No. Seven-day week? <laughs> I see my kids too much. I'm going to get a text on that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so 9B, I'm doing an individual roll, roll call vote. Roll call. Okay. So, um, no one is for annual meeting election. So may I have a, a roll, uh, may I have a motion to approve 9B? I'll move. Peter? I'll second. Jan? Okay, and we'll do a roll call vote. I'll start with Jan. Yes. Peter? Yes. Molly? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Jody? Yes. And Ed? Yes. So it moves 6-0. Thank you. Do I do, Melissa, roll call on C in each one of these? think so see we had someone a lot more experienced last meeting doing this so they would know <laughs> okay thank you I will uh, make a motion or ask if I can have a motion to move on 9c through I would say 10a we don't have to move on 10 right okay no. how about yeah. 9f yeah. I'll get it right before the end of the year <laughs> I promise 9f I'll make a motion Liz and may I have a second please Second. Molly? Okay. Um, any discussion? Let's see, we got the summer math program, um, summer learning program, APR. Um, all, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? No. Move 6 0. We do not do 10A. That brings us to one of my favorite parts, number 11 public yeah. comments. Good. Financial uh, reports? I'm sorry? Financial reports? I don't think we have to approve them, right? Yeah, they're just, just there. Documents. Thank you. Um, so if we go on number number 11, public comments. Is there anyone here who would like to make public comments on any, uh, anything? Anyone would like to speak? Do I have, oh, I have a list from Melissa. Thank you. Sorry, I should have grabbed it before. Do you want to put the podium back at? Do you want the podium back? Um, he's got it. Yeah, he's doing it. I have a, I have a roadie. You got a roadie? I have a roadie. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. Um, okay, I'm going to, I read it once already. Basically, just the second part would be, um, is for it, basically any other comments um, other than the agenda, if you're going to speak, and you know the rules. Um, especially, I know Jen's coming up next, so she knows the rules. Jen? It's like it's too tall. You can hold it if you want. Okay. That's too tight. Um, my name is Jen. I'm uh, at 47 Manhasset Street. Um, I know um, we had uh, people, um, the social workers come in and the psychiatrists come in um, a couple of meetings ago, uh, but it's come to my attention and it's not my personal person, um, little person, but bullying has been severely increased um, since the students came back. Um, I know it's individual to the school uh, the school, and how it's gonna be handled, but I wanna know how the district um, is gonna try to push so the bullying is not gonna continue because um, I have friends that kids, um, their students, don't, they're, they don't wanna come to school because they're being bullied. Um, and not, nothing's being done. And um, I helped my friend to tell what they're going forward. But 
um, to do, but I just think it, overall there needs to be something that needs to be happening um, district wide to help these kids not feel uncomfortable going to school and not being bullied. And so I'm hoping that we can come to something. So. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Amy? My guess in that's how do I say the last name? Roniker. Roniker? Yes. Excellent. Hopefully the microphone works for you. Although good job overcoming adversity, Jen. You can just hold it if you want to, if it's easier. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's okay. Okay. Uh, my name is Amy Roniker. Um, I'm at 13 Thornwood Drive. And I'm actually here. Um, I know that um, I had spoken with Jody. And my daughter goes to East High School. And there is a situation that is happening. There is a student who was born male who is now identifying this year as a freshman as a they, them, which is completely fine, except the issue that is happening is this student is swapping bathrooms from different times of the day to different days of the week, and pictures are being taken in the bathroom. Any time that any student has complained about it, the student that is complaining is being told that they are the one discriminating against the other student, which the problem there is if that was any other girl or any other boy going into the bathroom because it's happening in both restrooms, what would be being done, they would be in trouble. But this said person, nothing is happening except talking to, which is not changing it. And now the pictures have appeared on Snapchat. I would love to tell you that I had them in my hand today to show to you. I do That's that, not, but I'm I am sorry. working on getting them so they can be presented to you all because this is a serious problem. Okay. Um, obviously, would you be able to stick around until we finish the meeting? Okay. There are some other parents who were scared to come forward. There are some kids that have been scared to tell their parents because they're being told by the administration at the high school that it's discrimination. But I know my daughter's friends with kids in all grades. She's involved in many activities. There are many children that identify in the same capacity as they and them or the transgender. And there isn't a problem with other people. It's one person in particular. Yeah. And these kids should not be scared to go into the restroom that someone's taking their picture. Yeah, what, what you're describing is nothing we would ever tolerate or want. So I, I'd be very interested in getting some more information from you. So I would be happy. I don't anticipate this meeting taking a ton longer. So if you've got a few minutes, like I said, it'd be Absolutely. Don't mind. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for coming up. I'm not cutting anyone, am I? Um, no, no, actually, sorry. Just two on the list. So you're, uh, you're up next, sir. Okay. We know who you are and we know and, where you live. You know, I'll piggyback on the topic of bullying. Obviously, we know that it's a, uh, an incredibly dangerous and uh, a growing phenomenon. And we have right here one of the chief culprits of it. I would like to see the district take a more proactive stance and have parents in it for a forum and have actual professionals who can speak about what these devices can do and what they're doing. Um, Orchard Park just held a very uh, proactive uh, parent, parent evening, um, had people in to discuss the uh, dangers of social media, the addiction to technology with parents. Um, I think our district needs to, uh, needs to follow that, that lead. Um, my other comment is with in terms of the fields that yes, students are getting outside, student athletes are getting outside. Uh, once again, the East baseball team will not have a field to play on, um, or practice on. Um, they do not have a, a home field. They play at Centennial. And the ripple effect of that is that now Centennial is fully booked of all their dates. And the West Seneca Youth Baseball Association that relies on Centennial to play is being blocked from using the fields. Last year, when uh, I brought Ricky Albano, the president of the West Seneca Baseball Association, to the table, uh, when we had no baseball fields, West Senior was not adequate for, um, for varsity games. That's why those games were moved to Centennial. East did not have a field. West Seneca Youth Baseball had all the dates blocked out. 
Ricky sat down at the table with our athletic director, with uh, Mr. Bystrick, and uh, we worked something out. There was a, a really good uh, uh, give and take and sharing there. Um, to this point, West Seneca Youth Baseball was never even asked if they were going to be using any dates. There was no, it was not the, the goodwill of that, that association was not reciprocated this year by the district. Um, uh, the ripple effect of the decision to put two identical football field track complexes three miles, not even three miles apart from one another, and not address a baseball field, no turf baseball field. Yes, we had some updates at West because we had to. Um, it just continues to have an impact. We talked about this last year, and uh, I'm just hopeful that at some point we'll recognize the error of that decision and make it right. Um, to wait for another project to come up, um, and I know that, that I'm being told that's the answer, well, there's another class of kids that won't have a field to play on. So, that's all. Thank you. Appreciate you coming up. Any, anyone else? Good? Okay. We'll close the public comment section. Um, and uh, move on to Board of Education discussion. There's just a couple things that we're going to start a discussion on. Um, strategic planning and grant writing. Um, if I could just start with the grant writing one first. Yeah. So, hey, uh, Will, did you want to come on up to the table maybe just to be a part of this conversation? So uh, as Will's coming up here, basically there's two areas. So uh, actually with Colazza, believe it or not, I mean, we've talked about being able to bring a grant writer into the district uh, on a contract basis for a number of years. Typically speaking, you invest X amount of dollars and you get back a lot more money than you spent in the first place on the grant writer. Um, we, uh, Nicole actually had sought out one in particular because she was looking for at a particular grant that she thought would help make us a little more efficient. Um, so at the end of the day, though, we had a great conversation with this individual, uh, and I think that this is something that, you know, basically they would come in, they would take a look, starting off at our budget, and they would line by line itemize our budget and say, I think this could be potentially paid for by a grant, this could be paid for by a grant. Uh, so that we could utilize some of our own money and differently, you know, whether it's adding program, adding teachers, things like that. Um, they will, on a monthly basis, uh, be able to like, send us just a list of available grants that are out there for us. Um, you know, essentially, you kind of commit for a year, but then after that, it's on a quarterly basis if you're interested in being able to secure them. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I was very impressed by the company. I know Will was part of that conversation as well. This is something we've entertained for quite some time. And again, I mean, they, their goal is to make back tenfold what you spent on them. And I, to be honest with you, I don't think that's an overreach necessarily. So it's, it's not a huge expense that we'd be looking at. So, uh, Will, I don't know if you have anything to add as far as the grant writing is concerned. Um, no, just to say, uh, take a look into other areas that we don't have the, the time and the ability to really go and access writing a grant, especially ones to private companies or private foundations, is very glorious. Um, they have expertise in doing so, so if we were able to tap those funds, it would be having to use their expertise to make it so. I think it's a worthwhile uh, investment. You know, we look at it a year from now, it's either been successful or not, and, you know, judge it from there. Uh, we, we expect to Try to build revenues from non-traditional sources. We really need to to look outside of the various foundations, outside of state education and DOE that offer grants. That look to private sources of funds to, to perhaps expand social emotional programming or safety and security programming or any one of a number of topics that the foundations are. Yeah, I mean, a perfect example, honestly, the Tower Foundation is one of them. Uh, and I know another district that actually secured quite a bit of funds uh, to help pay for uh, mental health first aid training for every staff member of the district. Um, it's a very, it's a great program, honestly. It's a day-long training, but uh, it's something we started to do a few years back before the pandemic hit, um, but it's, it, it can be costly. So, uh, how, it's a, how expensive is it to uh, hire them? Grant writer? Yeah. It would probably be 30 to 35000 for one year. And then after that, uh, you know, you, you go on a quarterly basis. Mm -hmm. So they invest the funds up front to get to know the district, you know, where they can fill needs, mm -hmm. um, and then begin to apply. They have some which they believe we will qualify for, which is the question of meeting deadlines and, and getting um, 
the documents come forth together. So the second year would be based on their success in the first year. Um, and we would pay for it over two budget years right. in the end of this year and, and next year. So spread yeah. spread We've the We've begun, on the historical board, we have begun to be successful at getting grants in yeah. I think it's a great route. I mean, there's one grant. Yeah, they're great. I mean, I, I personally think it's a great idea. I mean, that one grant alone comes back tenfold. The one we're looking at right now, if we get it, is, you know. Well, there's, and, there's just a lot of opportunities. Again, it's not funding that we normally, you have to ask, you have to apply, you have to yeah. compete. Correct. And they're the experts in you know, helping us do that. They've got a track record with other school districts. Other school districts. Yeah. yeah. You know, all I mean, it's not just some random companies. No, yeah. no, no, no. They actually, I, I think they, I want to yeah, say, did, did, did they send it to us already? There's like a list of other places they've been working with. So, yeah. This is a reputable organization, to be honest with you. I love the idea. I do too. Um, yeah. Is there anything that we need to do to discuss it more? Is there anything that I mean, we just don't? We would probably put forward uh, the proposal for the board to approve at a future meeting uh, because it is a contract. Okay. So if any of us have questions or anything, we can... We, we would send you... We'll pull together a little write-up and send it along to you. Well, it's not like we're getting another personnel person. It's, it's we're just contracting with a company yeah, to do sure. something. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, this is, I mean, again, we talk about non-traditional revenue sources, but I love the idea of them looking, dissecting our budget and saying, you know, you're paying for this right now out of state aid, but guess what? There's grant funding available that could pay for this as well. Or it's, if it's a new initiative that we want to pursue, not supplanting something, but actually, you know, supplementing, adding something new to our, you know, to the district. So, yeah. no, that's, uh, I mean, I really appreciate the, the thought put into that. Yeah. Well, Nicole sought this person out for yeah, us. So, yeah. So. She's, I mean, when I saw those emails about what she was looking at. Yeah. I mean, That's and again, impressive. if we just like, go, someone can randomly write the grant, and you get one thing wrong, yeah. then you're just, you're tossed. There, there, there's, might, a, there's a bit of an art form to it. I almost yeah. wanted to hire a scholarship writer for my son yeah. doing scholarships because, you know, if you send it in a PDF, but they want it in something else, a yeah. different format, they don't even look at it. Yep. So it's really, uh, you know, stressful to do an e a, a scholarship. So yeah. um, I, I love the idea. I definitely would like to move forward looking into it. We'll send along some other information for you to be able to take a look at. So and this isn't, you're not voting on anything it. tonight. We just wanted to bring it up and you know, kind of front load you with some info, and then we'll send along some more information about the company. Okay. So. Great. This is different from the legislative grants. Uh, we'll come through our legislators. This is different. I just you know, want to clarify that. Because, yeah. This hopefully will be non-taxpayer funded grants. A lot of it, like you said, private sector. There's a lot of foundation. Yeah, yeah. Foundation. like you have Ralph Wilson yeah. found. I mean, some of the bigger ones that you've heard of before. I don't want to yeah. go on a big list, but I mean, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, though, but that's like the concept is let's yeah. not pull everything out of taxes. Yeah, right no, there's there's money out there. Right. Yeah. Great. Appreciate that. Um, do we want any other discussion about it right now? Anyone? How about uh, strategic planning? So, Will, do you want to maybe just talk a little bit about your experiences working with PLC Associates? Yeah, I've been part of uh, two districts that embarked on strategic planning initiatives. And they used a facilitator to accomplish the process. You know, the ones that I'm familiar with is a company called PLC Associates. Um, their contract is, is BOCES co-servable, so we would get BOCES aid on their contract. And they act as a, a facilitator or coordinator to pull together a group of what they call their core team, which is a few uh, people from the district, uh, possibly a board member or two, and then a lot of people from the community. Uh, if you want an example of their work, you can look at the Frontier's uh, website or Dunkirk's website, school districts, uh, and you can look, search for their strategic plan. The documents are not 300 pages long, and have all sorts of schedules attached. The documents are, they're brief, they're pointed, they, they point towards strategic initiatives that the district can use as guidelines as it makes its decisions going forward. <coughs> well, what do we value? What do we want to see? What do we think we need to address? Um, and it's 
a decision-making framework that's, that's brought about in conjunction with, like I said, community leadership as well. So one of the things that's most impressive is if you look at the group of people that participated in Frontiers Project, you will not see my name. Um, they, I acted as a financial resource. I answered questions for the committee. But it wasn't there for me to put my imprint on, or really any administrator to put their imprint on. It was about what this community, you know, desires to have as far as its educational structure. So, um, I would, you know, look at these type of plans. You, you can find others on other school district websites. It is a process. It does take time. It takes effort. There's uh, usually meetings late in the day because you're, you're dealing with private citizens who probably work during the daytime. And, you know, they come out for an evening meeting, you know, once a month, you know, once every other month. But the benefit of using PLC, in my, my experience, has been that they guided and drove the process to successful conclusion. It wasn't a process that just sort of, you know, kept evolving. It was, it was on a track and it moved. If you look back under Vince Capola, this was a big thing that we did. We did district. work with PLC Associates as well. Yeah. Did we Dr. Coppola and yeah. uh, okay. Jim yeah. Potts. But uh, mm -hmm. this was done back, this was the big thing back in the early 90s. <laughs> that yeah. We did strategic planning. But I thought it was more of a, a program that involved a lot of community. <clears throat> yeah, well, I, community membership will be part of the core team. There may be a survey good. or whatever that goes out. I mean, it was, yeah. and then it wore out. <laughs> Yeah, but the, the benefit about this document is, is it's only worthwhile if it's not going to live in a binder and a shelf. It has to be used continuously to frame decision making, you know, inside the district. And it, and it should be a living document that gets amended as district priorities change. But, you know, if you look at some of the priorities that were identified, and, and I'm just speaking from my experience, I'm not saying that they would apply here. From West Seneca and Dunkirk City School, you'll see that there's some of them get more specific, mm -hmm. but some of them you can read between the lines where they're at. Yeah. You know, and so, it's it's really about meeting the needs of the community and making sure that the message of the district is is out there and how we make decisions and hold us accountable for how we make the decisions I'm inside the framework. I'm glad that you saw. Mm -hmm. the, I feel like a historian sitting here, but um, Vince uh, Dr. Vince. Yeah, the, I spoke to the chief executive officer of PLC, mm -hmm. and she immediately recalled experience in West Africa. Yeah, and is familiar with the district. Whether we use them or not, I'm, I'm right. pushing them forward as an example. Well, you're right. So it would really be up to the board to make that. There should be a plan. Yeah, <laughs> and, and being a board that I believe focuses on community input too. I mean, we we're big on. I, I think. You know, I mean, it, it's coming from the guy who ran the 21st Century Committee. Um, I, you know, I thought that was a great way to get the community involved. Yeah, you know, not everything, you know, always ends up the way it is, but the living document concept of that is what I like. It, it can be updated or changed as long as we, you know, you got administrators, yep. you got superintendent, you got the board, the community's all behind it, then you're not necessarily going to be ignoring it. It, it grounds um, you. Yeah. It grounds like you. That. So you can imagine underneath sort of the... Uh, you know, the umbrella of the whole process that you would have different task force or initiatives looking at, you know, whether it's enrollment, whether how our budgets are constructed, how our buildings are configured in use, um, all those aspects of it. How do we conduct social emotional learning in the district? How do we conduct, as uh, you know, Mrs. Fowler said earlier, like what's our special ed structure? Is it the best structure for us? you know, as a district, how do we benchmark ourselves that way against other districts locally, against other districts across the state, for that matter, against other districts across the country. Um, and brings that data in that helps us, you know, make the best decisions we can with the resources that we have to put in the right spot. So, you know, the, we can have more discussions. Yeah, we could check out the Frontier and the Dunkirk websites. I'd encourage everybody to go take yeah. a look. I mean, just I, I think there, there's, there's some potential here. Yeah. It's not even 30 pages. I mean, it's a quick read, but read it from a, a perspective of, you know, just a guiding 
if you would, guiding framework for, for moving the district forward. Oh, check it and out. It's, it's very much community driven. And it's aidable? Yes. The PLCs, uh, one of the things that I enjoy about them is they get 65 cents on a dollar back the next year. So I think 67, Well, if I just want to. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah. It would be interesting to pull out the old document that we did and see how much we Yeah, that would be a nice uh -huh. Friday night read. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, it apparently sat on the shelf though recently, so we could update it. So there we go. There. Yeah. Do we get like a returning discount? If, if we're already well, using you them? punch a card. Can There's can a punch be... card they have. No commitment. No, I, I'd be interested in talking about this tomorrow. Yeah, I haven't made any commitments. We'll, we'll, if, if it's something the board is interested in, I would suggest that we arrange for a conversation between the PLC associates and members of the board. Yeah. And, you know, superintendent and you know, you guys decide whether if strategic planning is the way we're going to go, that's, that's fantastic. I'm totally behind it. If it's PLC or somebody else, yeah. it's whatever it is. But like, yeah. I, I yeah, hope definitely to be part yes. of a strategic initiative that sort of sets a framework for the next, you know, three to five years. Yeah. Get some input from Peter and his group, too, Yeah. on that. Have them see if they can check out the website. If you don't mind, if you mind, then don't do it. It's up to you. Um, can we? Yeah. Can we move? Can we see about setting up a meeting or something? Is anyone sure, opposed to it? Sure. Do you want to wait till Diane and? Um... Yeah. Well, it's, cost us anything come back to in a set week up the meeting. And, yeah. You know, yeah. like it's just. And then by the time you know Diane's back. Yeah, we wouldn't have anything in advance of yeah. Diane coming back anyway. So yeah. yeah. Well, how long does the process take? About a whole year? Or what do you see? What have you seen in the past? I don't think it has to take that long, especially no. if, you, if you break up the work. Mm -hmm. I mean, people who are curriculum focused, these yeah. work, people who would be a task force, say, on enrollment and building use and, you know, uh, district lines, would be a whole other working group. They can all work independently and then bring their the information to the whole, and then the core committee. Is not going to be doing all these things. The core committee is really there to say, like, okay, let's look at all this stuff. And what makes sense? So if they're not the people that are going to be, you know, getting their hands dirty doing the doing the dirty work of digging out the data, we would rely on experts who will you know, do as much of the work we could ourselves. But it's really the core committee that's going to make the decisions. Okay. You know, how to structure and what are the four most important tenants. And what are the specific goals underneath those tenants that you know, the district's going to be working towards in the future? And then it's up to the board, like obviously, to take that information in along with the superintendent administration to implement it. Yeah, and it's yeah. difficult to set in. They're not the end all be all. Whether you're a board or a district setting annual goals, if you have this framework, the framework sort of gives you the boundaries and then you pick off the things you're going to try to. We're going to make a difference in these scores by 5%. We're going to make a difference in this by, you know, 10%. We're going to improve attendance by 2%. Whatever it is, hey, it just, set those goals yeah. and then turn around and look back and say, yeah, it just gives you something to go back and say, how close are we to doing this? If it's a, like you said, a fluid living document. If you need to adjust it, you adjust it, but you have a basis for doing that. So I think that's the, that's the benefit of this. If it's going to be a piece of paper that goes in a binder. I've got lots of binders. It's really got to be something that the community yep. everybody else buys into and yep. you know, we want to have and be held accountable to. Yep. yep. Great. I love the idea. Yep. Anything else? Anything else for, thank you. Anything else for uh, discussion? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Did Bueller? you just say Bueller? Bueller? Oh. Hello. Okay. Um, I think that takes us to adjournment. If I can have a motion to adjourn. I'll motion. I'll second. Jody. Second will be Liz. Thank you. Have a great evening, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate Thanks, it. everyone. Have a good night. Oh, all in favor? Aye. Say aye. aye. I'll get it right before June, I promise. And then those of those of you sticking around, stick around. We'll be right with you.